Today, Bitcoin hits a nine-month high after a wild weekend rally. The FDIC sells Signature Bank but leaves out its crypto business. And Dan Ashmore of Coin Journal explains why Bitcoin's still tightly correlated with stocks despite its recent gains. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Pippa Stevens. Cryptocurrencies are coming off huge rallies over the weekend. By noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded right around the $28,000 mark, near its highest level in nine months. Ether, meanwhile, traded above $1,700, and Solana was worth around $23. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. First up, the FDIC has found a buyer for Signature Bank. Flagstar Bank, a division of the New York Community Bank Corp., will buy Signature's assets, which includes most deposits, some loans, and all 40 of its former branches. One asset not on the table, though, Signature's crypto business. The FDIC noted Flagstar's bid did not include deposits related to the digital banking business, and those won't transfer to Flagstar with the rest of Signature's deposits. Instead, the FDIC will provide digital banking customers deposits directly. Next, Bitcoin ATM maker General Bytes is halting its cloud service over security concerns. The company announced on Twitter that it experienced a security incident and that an attacker was able to run a program that gave them access to users' hot wallets. General Bytes said the hacker could access and send funds from wallets, download usernames and passwords, and turn off two-factor authentication. Now, the company is saying customers should take immediate action to protect their accounts. General Bytes has more than 15,000 ATMs across 150 countries. Last, Taiwan is reportedly ramping up a new regulatory regime for crypto. According to Bloomberg, Taiwan will name the Financial Supervisory Commission as the main authority overseeing crypto. It would be the first time the country has appointed a regulator for the crypto space. Now, the move comes as other governments in the region, like Singapore, have taken a much stricter stance on crypto. At the same time, though, Hong Kong is setting out to make itself a crypto hub. CNBC just spoke to companies who say they're hopeful Hong Kong will be a compass for China on crypto rulemaking. You can read that full story over at CNBC.com. All right, for our main story, let's talk more about crypto markets. Bitcoin has been on a tear as investors hope that the Fed's days of raising interest rates are quickly coming to an end. Now, despite the rally in recent days, Dan Ashmore of Coin Journal says Bitcoin remains tightly correlated with stocks. So Crypto World's Jordan Smith spoke to him to find out more. What's driving this huge rally in recent days? I mean, Bitcoin has been bouncing right around the $28,000 level for the first time in about nine months. Is this optimism from rate hikes or is this an alternative to the struggles in banking that's driving investors into crypto right now? I think it's very much the former. It's uh, a reaction to a complete flip in the interest rate forecasts in, in the wider economy. Um, if you go back to before Silicon Valley Bank collapsed, you know, if, if you looked at the probabilities backed out by future rates, there was an 83% chance of higher rates by 100 basis points or greater by the summer. Today, when we look at that, uh, it's completely off the cards and we're, we're now seeing almost 100% probability of rate cuts. So it's a huge optimism that the quantitative tightening cycle of the last year or 18 months is, is coming to a close. And, and that's really been what has suppressed Bitcoin and, and crypto's prices so much because they, they've traded like risk on assets. And uh, the, it's music to crypto cryptocurrency investors' ears to hear that that tightening cycle may be coming to a close. Yeah. I mean, if people are watching Bitcoin's performance right now, especially compared to the stock market, um, they'll see it maybe as a sign that it's ready to break out of this correlation that it's had with stocks. But you've been doing research on this and you say that this may not actually be the case. Can you talk about the correlation between Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies and, and their, their correlation with tech stocks right now? Yeah, so you're right, like that's kind of been the, it's the ultimate bull vision for Bitcoin that it can become this hedge asset, this uncorrelated asset, um, some kind of form of digital gold. Um, but to date, it really hasn't been the case. You know, we've seen it trade in, in lockstep, especially with the NASDAQ, the more tech heavy index. Um, you know, the NASDAQ rises in price, the Bitcoin rises a little more, the NASDAQ falls, Bitcoin falls a little more. Now, the last couple of weeks have been really interesting and that Bitcoin has outperformed, but 
I think this is just a, a reflection of the fact that it is so correlated towards the interest rate, or it's a reflection of the fact that it is so dependent on the interest rate forecast and the flip in those markets has been, it's been astonishing in terms of, you know, we, we, we've now almost definitely got to see cuts by the summer. And it's been like Bitcoin's been held like like a ball underwater. And, and now that, that that source of, uh, that's holding it back is now gone, that we, we expect to see, uh, or investors are betting that it'll be returned to a more uh, tech and crypto friendly environment going forward. Um, the, the scale of the rise is surprising, especially when you look at the fact that uh, the big crypto friendly banks are, you know, they've evaporated into thin air. You, you look at Silvergate and Signature, um, and these will be unquestioned uh, headwinds going forward in the, in the long term. But this, so when you look at it from that regard, it is surprising to see, you know, the scale of this rise. But to, to, to conclude that this means now that Bitcoin is uncorrelated, I think would be a little misinformed given, um, y- you know, what we've seen in the, the interest rate market. We have seen periods of decorrelation previously over the last year um, with Celsius, Luna and FTX specifically. The difference then was that they were big cryptocurrency specific sources of downside, uh, events to the downside. So you know, so all those big scandals drive crypto prices downwards, especially the latter one with FTX, which came at a point where inflation expectations and, and the numbers coming out were, were starting to look a little softer and, and the stock market actually bounced upwards, whereas crypto deviated to the downside. So what we're seeing now is a similar case, although it's not a crypto specific, it's almost traditional finance that's that's leading this, uh, this, th- this episode. But um, the, the reason to conclude that the correlation will will come back to how it was previously is that in those previous cases, the the, the case of decorrelation around Celsius and FTX, uh, the correlation to risk assets went back to, you know, that symbiotic relationship uh, after a couple of weeks. So that's uh, another reason to kind of uh, predict that, you know, we'll we'll see a more uh, predictable relationship going forward between these two risk assets. Yeah, you've talked about the headwinds with banking there. I I mean, I'm curious if, if Bitcoin is still correlated with stocks, do you see this recent rally? fizzling out because Wall Street is still facing pretty significant headwinds, not just from crypto friendly banks, but from regional banks and and European banks. Um, Do you see Bitcoin sort of returning to a a lower level, given that reality could set in and and we still have problems in the banking system? I mean, it's almost impossible to to forecast Bitcoin in the short term, but it certainly wouldn't surprise me to see it it, it pull back a little when when you see it, how much it has outperformed in the last couple of weeks and you consider those headwinds. Um, It's not only the fact that that vital fiat on ramp into the cryptocurrency world is now has now been severed. It's that kind of um, breakdown of trust further between traditional finance and cryptocurrency players. Um, th- these are big problems going forward in the industry. And, and, you know, it comes off the back of a year where cryptocurrency has already seen its reputation pillaged, really, when, when you look at the scandals from Luna and FTX and Celsius and on and on. So, yeah, it would not surprise me in the slightest to see to see crypto fall back down and, and Bitcoin as well. Mm. One last question for me in terms of the type of investor that's sort of driving the recent rally here. Um, is there any sort of sign in on-chain data showing whether it's it's institutional investors or the big name players that are looking for safety, if it's retail investors sort of trusting cryptocurrencies again and coming back into the market? Is there any sort of sign as to who's driving prices right now? There's no notable pattern between the two. Um, sometimes you do see rallies that are unquestionably led by whale wallets and institutional players. Other times you see you know, you know a wave of retail. Um, looking right now, it's, it's kind of even across the board. Uh, if you, if you look at it, it's, it's just an overall uh, flipping sentiment and, and really reflection across the market um, to this new forecast that we, we will start to see rate cuts coming down the line. So it, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where it's coming from. But there's no real uh, obvious party jumping out. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we are back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.